Hello again EPQ students. Today we're going to look at a session on writing and referencing. So to begin with, what I'd like you to think about is what makes a good piece of academic writing. Just pause the video and make a, a short little list about all the things that you think makes a, a good piece of academic writing. Hopefully guys what you've said is things such as a clear line of argument, uh, well-structured paragraphs, the points are critically based on evidence, you've got both descriptive and critical analysis and I'll talk about what that means shortly. It should avoid personal opinion. As part of your research project you shouldn't be biased, you shouldn't use the word I or we, you should use the third person instead because it's a piece of research that has been carried out and it isn't an opinion, it is something that you have come to a critical conclusion based on evidence. The use of, of precise language so you're clear in your meaning as to what you want to get across to the reader. To avoid any abbreviations and contractions, if you do wish to have abbreviations or contractions in your project that's fine, such as acronyms, provided that you've predefined these in some kind of acronym list. Also the use of quotations would be jolly helpful if you're particularly referencing something that somebody has said and um, you know I'll give some examples of how you can do that shortly. This, this list is obviously by no means exhaustive but it's a good starting point to think about what makes good academic writing and how can you write well. Writing well really starts with a structure. You won't do very well and your, your uh, essay or report won't be very good if you don't plan out the structure of your report first. So that's the first important thing to think about is your structure itself and how that will help you to write in a critical and academic style. So you need to consider how you're going to do that. Often the use of subheadings will really help you to structure your report. Pause the video guys and then have a think about whether you want to make some notes or so on, what this could look like. Okay, here are some links, a whole host of different links from various universities around the world uh, as to how to write uh, academically, uh, either in terms of an essay or a report, uh, you know, and what kind of phrases and things that you can use to help you uh, when structuring an argument and when structuring your report. What I will do is I will put, uh, post this PowerPoint onto Teams so that you can quickly click these links and it will take you to a relevant page that will help you uh, in terms of learning how to write well and this will sort of corroborate what you thought about before in terms of what academic writing and how to structure your report and what that might well look like. Okay, next little slide. There's a whole host of different uh, statements here. Uh, what I'd like you to do is just to pause the video and to think about whether each of these is critical analysis or whether it's descriptive. So descriptive writing simply says what is happening. A critical analysis is why and how. So pause the video and just make two little columns. I'm afraid they aren't the same number of each. They're, just as a bit of a hint, there are more uh, descriptive writing statements than there are critical analysis statements. Okay, well done. Hopefully you, what you've got is in terms of descriptive writing that, that, that states what is happening, what something is like, giving the story so far, outlines an order in which things have happened, or instructs how to do something, or is a list of something, or an outline of something, where anything where you're stating someone's opinion, or noting a method used, or links between things, or just giving information about reports or findings, all of that is a simple description in terms of what, rather than why or how, or the various benefits or uh, disadvantages for a particular situation. 
So what is really critical, and you need to start with descriptive writing, but ultimately you should end with critical analysis. You can't have one really without the other, I would argue, but critical analysis is a very, very high-level skill where you'll look at that information, you'll draw conclusions, you'll be able to show the relevance of links between various different pieces of information or talk, comment on the significance. Uh, and the key thing and what, what they're looking for in the EPQ as part of your you know, a higher level skill in terms of how you're assessed is to make real reasoned judgments. Why have you chosen to do something? Uh, what are the, the reasons for doing something? Why something will work best? Why is something relevant or suitable? To really argue a case according to what evidence is in front of you and really making a reasoned judgment for that. Okay, last little thing thinking about how to write academically. There is a little paragraph here on uh, alcohol dependency. Um, what I'd like you to do is use some useful phrases for critical commentary, and I'll place these useful phrases onto Teams. What I'd like you to do is to use those phrases to help you to make the following paragraph more critical you can kind of use those to rewrite it in your own way. I'm not going to go through this uh, because I think time is tight. However, I think it is useful for you to, to gain experience in using those phrases to help you to improve your critical commentary. OK, last part of the lesson, because really this is in, in two parts, really. The first part is about how to write academically. The second part is obviously about referencing, which is really important as part of your writing. So academic writing requires you to respond, as we've seen, to ideas or writing of others, other people. And you, you should, if you're writing critically, have your own sort of interpretation of what has come before. So that can take the form of what experiments have been carried out in the past, of what other people's views have been. It can be quotations from books, from journals, you know, but the key thing is that wherever you quote another piece of information or use another piece of information, you need to cite your sources, you know, so that others can find and easily read those sources for themselves. It ensures that credit, therefore, is given to the original source and is not plagiarised, it isn't stolen. And for your EPQ, you need to keep a list of every source of information that you use to make it into a bibliography. And it's far easier to construct this as you go along, uh, you know, throughout your project than write it at the end. What I advocate is keeping a, a Word file uh, somewhere with all of your sources. Maybe you can do it by date, but very, you know, I'll show you how to reference. And there are bits of software out there, such as EndNote, that help you to reference properly. And I think even Word uh, can do it as well. But we'll look at that uh, in good time. So why do you need to reference? Well, plagiarism is rife. I've picked some historic cases that you might have heard of. So there was a, a media psychiatrist known as uh, Professor Raj Pasord, and he uh, was a, a medical doctor. Um, and, uh, to be a psychiatrist, you have to be. But he was uh, hauled in front of the General Medical Council because he plagiarised articles from other academics. And he's, I believe he's since been struck off. He can't, uh, you know, practice medicine as a result because he's, he's presented the work of the others as the work of his own. Uh, Coldplay, and this crops up all the time for various musicians, uh, musicians were often um, accused of plagiarism for stealing, you know, notes or parts of songs from others, and it's treated very, very seriously in court. Um, even uh, J.K. Rowling has, uh, uh, you know, filed suits against other authors uh, for claiming that they have seek sought parts of her work and plagiarised it. Uh, and Adrian Jacobs, an author, um, fell foul of this, but it was ultimately settled out of court. 
So I hope I've convinced you of the importance of referencing. The question is when do you need to reference? What I'd like to do is to have a little think about this and complete a little mind map for as many sources of information that need to be referenced. I've given you a little bit of a clue here because you could, for instance, reference facts and photographs. Uh, just write a little list as part of a mind map and uh, I'll pick up with some points in a second once you've done that. And again, you can pause the video to let me do that. OK, the truth is, what needs referencing? Almost everything. Any time or situation where you use something that isn't your own, uh, you know, is a secondary data source, whether it's a graph that you haven't created, or a figure that you've stolen from a textbook, or a photograph, or a diagram, or an opinion, or a piece of music, anything that you've got from somebody else will need referencing, no matter how big or how small. Um, and we'll go through how you can reference through your EPQ and the two different systems that you can use to uh, reference effectively. So the first uh, system of referencing that we're going to come across is called the Harvard system. It's used widely in uh, the humanities, throughout English and the humanities, and it involves in the body of the text you have a citation which is the name and of the person you're quoting or the, the, um, the author of a paper or a textbook, together with the date that the textbook was written or the source was written or the, the quote was said. So that's fine to do that as a little in parentheses. So you can see here there's a quote from Barack Obama and it, it, the quotation is written there in full and then in the body of the text of the citation is his name, you could get away with simply writing Obama 2005. But then at the end of your report, you'd want to give the full reference as part of a reference section at the end of the report. So you can see here that um, they have put Barack Obama 2005. It gives the quote again, and it states what that quote was from, whether it was from the Knox College commencement address uh, way back on June the 4th in 2005. So it's clear when that information was said and where you have obtained it. The Oxford system is an alternative means of citing your sources. It's particularly popular amongst scientific articles and anything you know science related. So in the body of the text, you write, a, 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 you know, the text is a note uh, or a number or a letter. So typically you use a number and then you'll have a footnote at the end of a reference section as a bibliography. So this is exactly the same quote uh, from exactly the same source. The difference is that you put a little number against the quote or against the part of the uh, article or journal that you have cited and then in your reference section as the end you have the number and you have the source of information just as before but it's not necessary to put a quote there. So you'll either need to choose the Harvard system or the Oxford system when referencing in your EPQ. It doesn't matter which you use however you need to obviously pick one and stick to it consistently. My own preference as a science teacher is for the Oxford system, which I think works really well for scientific articles where you're quoting lots of data or information that you've obtained from a research paper. But this may not uh, be as good for, let's say, some, if you're thinking about doing something in geography or history, because you'll be giving far more quotations uh, uh, and there are fewer um, scientific articles that you may need to cite. So it swings in roundabouts really. Okay, uh, I'll put onto Teams a little resource uh, called uh, Activity 3, which has been provided by the University of Manchester. What I'd like you to do is to look at the sources on the sheet and read the extract from the student's report. What I'd like you to think about is whether you think the student has plagiarised this information use bad writing practice 
or use the source in an, un in an acceptable way. So whether it, it's been plagiarized, they've used poor writing, or have used the source in an acceptable way. For extension, if you like to, you could look at how the reference has been written for each source type, and you could write a reference for three sources you've found for your EPQ already if you've started um, researching. Um, I'm not going to obviously force you to do that, and I will put up some answers on the Teams as well once you've done this. So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, final little take-home messages then, guys. Uh, and, you know what I'm sort of hoping you'll take away from this session in terms of referencing. Please don't cut and paste anything from anywhere. Cutting and pasting is not only from the internet. I mean, if you're writing something out from a textbook or whatever, that is akin to copying and pasting. It's fine to quote something, provided you're putting it in quotation marks so that the reader knows it's come from that particular source, whatever you've cited. It's really important that you construct your reference list as you go. Please do not leave it till the end of your project. You will have lost some and it will be a very, very difficult task. If you're in doubt at all, reference it. So always reference your sources. If you're not sure, just reference it. Imagine the person reading your EPQ is a detective because they want to catch you out, so don't let them. And your supervisors, when they're marking your project, will be looking at your use of resources and how you've referenced things and how you've critically analysed your sources. Finally, references also show that you've extended yourself during your research for an extended research project, which is what the EPQ is all about. Hence why um, it's a huge chunk of the marks and you'll, you, know, you will be marked on your use of resources. Just to finish with, some students have been asking me about what other resources and things you can use to help you to prepare for your EPQ. There are lots of really good books out there that you can find on Amazon if you were thinking about purchasing something just to give you a bit of a leg up, although obviously that's a matter for yourself. Some are on screen now. These are some good ones that you can get off Amazon from uh, Illuminate Publishing, Hodder and Oxford. But there are some really good online resources that will help you with research and referencing. I've gone through some of them already, but one of them is a, 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 a package from FutureLearn. It's actually made by the University of Bath. It's a free th uh, three-week course. It's all online, and it's intended for anybody who's currently undertaking a piece of academic research, which includes the EPQ, and it's recommended by the exam board themselves. What this covers is academic research, how to draft and develop research proposals, which obviously we've, we've gone through already, but it's, it's good to you know, learn more. Gathering information from literature and from findings. Looking at research methods, academic reading and note-taking. Referencing plagiarism and academic integrity, which obviously we've hinted at today. Academic writing, such as organising sources and structuring essays. Again, we've looked at that today. Uh, academic writing, summarising research projects into, into an abstract. That's less important for your EPQ, but you may wish to do it anyway. And academic presentations, the preparation of them and delivery. And next time uh, I see you, we will be looking at uh, precisely that, academic presentations and how to present and plan those. This is what the course looks like. It's entirely free. Uh, and all you need to do is to go to futurelearn.com. If you've got your phone with you as you're watching this, you can you know, take out your camera and uh, this particular QR code will take you straight there. And all you need to do is go to the uh, search function at the top, type in EPQ and you'll find that exact course we've just described.